So, so we thought we'd do a nice quick uh, EPOS now front of house um, demo uh, for retail. So on your login screen, you've got, for example, here, cashier, manager and supervisor. Um, you can set different roles based on uh, different logins. So for a manager, for example, um, they've got full control of discounting um, various other features um, that can be changed, essentially. A cashier, for example, might not be able to access back office, for example, uh, or be able to make discounts. Uh, there's various things you can toggle on and off. So we'll log, log in here so you can set passcodes for everyone. Click login. So here's your front screen. So it's quite, it's nice and clear. Um, you can organize this how you want. So you've got the categories here at the top. These can be whichever colors um, you want as well. So, you know, it's good for organizing and just line of sight will automatically go to the right color eventually. Uh, your products underneath here, um, they are, I suppose, your pop popular products. So you don't you know, limit the amount of click throughs. Uh, to give you an example then of adding products uh, to your basket. So for example here, uh, you've got books, and you've got a second category, kids, and you've got the bear book. That will add it here straight away. If you go back on home, you've got, say, clothing. This is an example of more categories, but you don't necessarily want this many click-throughs. Um, but that's just showing how you can organize things um, in terms of products. Um, you've got the search bar up here. Um, so if I searched new shoes, for example, that will pop up here. That can be linked to your barcode scanner as well, um, which is super easy to do if you just scan in items. Uh, if we go back here now, so a few examples, um, e EPOS now do some good features where they can uh, you can enable pop-ups for particular products. Um, it's good for upselling, it's good for product add-ons, um, and essentially creating bundles, which is nice and easy, and the best way of being able to get those extra sales. Um, so as an example here, you have shoes, new shoes. So I've enabled a pop-up here. So when you click on new shoes, it will come up here saying uh, to make sure that both shoe sizes are correct. Um, this can be obviously whatever you want in terms of, uh, it's essentially a reminder. Uh, this could be, have you asked the customer X question? Um, so it's quite handy just to you know, give that a reminder to people. Um, another example then, if we go on sports shoes, so here is, you know, I think the best way of using this is for upsells. So a lot of the time a customer will not necessarily obviously pick up everything that's available for a particular product. Um, this gives the opportunity for the cashier to uh, essentially top up the sale. Um, so someone's buying some um, sports shoes we can say, would you like some shoe protection spray? Uh, you can click on that. Um, or you can go on, yes, we want some spare laces. And click on that. You see here where it says, please choose up to two. You can set this to, to what you want. So it can be a requirement to add something. There's not too many instances of that. Um, I suppose that's more for the catering industry. Um, or you can simply um, have it to zero maximum two like we've done here so it's an option to add it on if we click done you'll see it will add that product in a group here the spare laces that is still an individual product um, on the back office um, so you'll still be able to do the exact same reporting as you would um, any other product in terms of how many have sold so here then you've got a few little boxes here. Obviously you can change the quantity, nice and easy. You could add a note saying, uh, blue shoes isn't the best example, um, 30 day return or something like that. That could be whichever you want. Uh, discount, uh, you can change these uh, to different reasons. Um, for example here, 
discount by percentage. We're going to get a 10% discount on that. Uh, obviously, then you can delete the product as well. Um, as we scroll down here, you can add the miscellaneous product. Um, that's if you haven't got something in the till for some reason. Um, it's usually best to stay away from this because you're not going to get the full reporting of miscellaneous products, um, but it's there if you need it. Uh, print, you can print a receipt um, before the transaction goes through. Essentially, it's an order. No sale, that will open the till up. Uh, quick product add, um, this is quite handy. It's similar to MISC in the way when you don't have a product on the system. If you have time, you could actually create it very quickly. Um, so you can put in your cost price, um, essentially to make reporting easier. Go off that one. Uh, we've got petty cash, again, to uh, petty cash in or out. Um, again, and just adjust float, uh, ch change in your float in your till. So, and then we've got customers. Any transaction, you can add a customer. Um, when we click through on the customer then, as an example here, um, quick idea of, you know, we can get the reports of um, what they purchased in the past. Um, we can put their, all their details in as well. Um, certain industries, that's super important. Um, and of course, email addresses It's the big one. We go back there. Then we've got orders. So orders there. So that is linked to the hold button here. So for example, here, this customer has bought these products, um, but they've decided they want another pair of shoes. So you're going to fit their shoes, but you don't want you know someone else deleting this um, and putting up a new new order. So you can press the hold button here. As you can see, it disappears here. Um, so the next member of staff can do a new sale. If you go back on orders, we'll see here that it's actually saved. Um, so we can click that. We can unhold. And that will bring it back up again. So there's quite a few instances where that would happen, um, where you need to get back onto the sale. Um, that can be used in various ways. Right, so then the payment screen. So if we click on pay you can obviously cash or card or the customer credit that will pop up automatically if the customer has some credit available um, for this example we've set that so there is a hundred pound credit available um, the card button um, that can be linked to your integrated card machine that epos now do um, they do price match uh, what you currently have um, with your current card provider and they'll provide you with the whole integrated payment solution um, or most card machines will actually integrate with EPOS now as well um, and there's no extra charges for that. Uh, discount, you can do discount as a whole for the whole transaction um, or you can do it for obviously the individual items here. Uh, split by item Again, it's more of a catering thing, this, but you can actually split the bill into different items. If someone wanted to pay for the new shoes and someone else wanted to pay for the sports shoes, for example. So, in this example, we're just going to press cash. That is a sale through. This then, obviously I haven't got a printer linked, but it will automatically print out your receipt um, there as well for the customer. And that is about it. So it's just a quick demo, um, but I hope that gives you a bit of an insight as to um, what you can see and how the flows work with EPOS Now. Just a reminder as well that EPOS Now are offering 20% off at the moment. Um, I put the link down in the description um, and they can give you a full demo uh, tailored to you as well.